Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You can be sweet and kind and nice even if there's not one thing in you that feels like it. And let me tell you something else. When you choose to do the right thing when it feels wrong, that's when you're growing and making progress. Now, tonight we're going to talk about how to stay dressed for battle. We are in a war. The mind is the battlefield. That's the first place that Satan will try to attack you. Any of you ever feel like you're just having some of the weirdest thoughts and you just think, when is this going to stop? Sometimes you even think, where in the world did that come from? It's like, or sometimes we will have like unrelenting attacks on our mind of worry or fear or concern over something. We have to learn how to open our mouth and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Quote something out of the word like Jesus did that's recorded in Luke chapter 4 and stop just being passive and not really acting like a soldier in the army of God. We are soldiers in the army of God and Jesus is the captain of the host. He's given us his name. He's given us his word. He's given us his blood. Now, I went for many years and had no idea that the devil was even real or that he was even a problem. I mean, I kind of vaguely knew there was a devil, but I didn't have any real understanding or revelation on it. And when I finally began to learn, when somebody began to teach me that the devil was behind most of my problems, some of them I was creating myself, but the devil was behind most of them, and that I had authority over him, I started hearing some teachings and going to some seminars about spiritual warfare back in the 70s and 80s. And so then most of us spent the next five or 10 years yelling at the devil all the time, screaming at the devil. I rebuke you, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. And to be very honest, that wasn't doing very much good either. We still had all the same issues. And finally the Holy Ghost drew me to him and he said, why don't you come and learn how Jesus did spiritual warfare? So I want to talk to you tonight how to really do spiritual warfare God's way. And it's not by screaming and ranting and raving. The devil is a spirit. You can't get a gun out and shoot him. You can't get a hold of him and choke him. You can't punch him in the nose. You can't knock his teeth out. He's a spirit and you have to fight him in the spirit. God has given us weapons and he's given us armor. With weapons, we go after the enemy. With armor, we are protected from the enemy. We need to know how to use our weapons and we need to make sure that we are wearing our armor on a regular basis. Spiritual warfare for spiritual people. How many of you have had it with the enemy and you're ready to learn how to fight him and win the war. All right. Well, we're going to start with Revelation 16, 15, which is a very odd scripture if you don't understand it. Behold, I'm going to come like a thief. Blessed, happy, and to be envied is he who stays awake, alert, and who guards his clothes. What in the world does that mean? Stay awake. And guard your clothes. I wonder what you would have thought if I would have walked out here tonight and said, tonight I'm going to teach on staying awake and keeping your clothes on. <laughs> you would have thought, where in the world is this going? He says, I want you to stay awake, stay alert, stay aggressive, walk in your authority, and learn how to guard your clothes so that your nakedness may not be seen. Now, let me tell you something. We all have clothes on our body tonight. Many of you worked really hard at getting your outfit just right. I know I worked on mine. Haven't worn a skirt for a long time. I want to know if you like my skirt. Do you like my skirt? It... 
Yeah, I used to always wear skirts and wouldn't wear pants. Then I got into wearing always pants, and they finally got me to wear some jeans. And now I just thought, I'm going to get me some skirts again. Get me a dress. You got to keep people guessing. Amen? But I worked hard on this outfit. However, I can tell you the devil couldn't care less about this outfit, nor could he care less about yours. He's not impressed with it. Doesn't make him one bit of difference if every thread you have on matches. He don't care about your earrings, your shoes, your jewelry, your bracelet. He don't care about none of it. But you do have on another set of clothes. You have a set on a, you have a set of spiritual clothes on. So when Revelation 16, 15 says, stay awake, stay alert, be sharp, be on guard, pay attention, and guard your clothes, he's talking about this spiritual clothing that we have to make sure that we're wearing at all times. What an insight and a revelation if you have never heard anything like this. The Bible uses the phrase put on and put off. I put on my clothes when I came over here. I put on my clothes when I came this morning. When I went back to the hotel this afternoon, I put them off. Then I selected some others and I put them on. When I go back tonight, I'll put these off and put on my pajamas. When I get up in the morning, I'll put on some more. When I get home, I'll put them off. Nobody just went and stood in your closet and your clothes just jumped on your body. You had to purposely choose them and you had to purposely put them on we need to learn how to live with intentionality that needs to be one of the first laws of our living and we need to realize it's one of the first rules of success intentionality we have to do things on purpose we can't just wait and see what falls on us we need to do it on purpose if we would even spend half the time getting dressed spiritually that we do getting dressed in the natural we'd be a lot further along in our walk with God and the devil would already be where he belongs which is under our feet now the Bible says put on Jesus Christ Put on love. Clothe yourself with mercy. <laughs> Put on kind feelings. Put on a lowly opinion of yourself, which is humility. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. Put on the full armor of God. Very interesting. Have you been doing that? Put on Jesus Christ means in the morning before you go anywhere, you get up and you make a decision. I belong to God. I don't belong to myself. And when I go out, when I go out of this bedroom, I start dealing with my family. When I go out the front door and I start dealing with society, I am a personal representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I need to put on behavior that's going to represent him. I have the mind of Christ. I have the spirit of God in me. I don't have the privilege or the right, which is not really a privilege, to go out and just act like everybody else. I'm an alien from a foreign planet. <laughs> I don't belong here. I'm passing through. I'm headed somewhere. And my real purpose in being here is not to please myself, it's to represent God and draw other people to Him through my godly behavior. Do we understand that? I want to enlist people this weekend in the army of God. I want you to sign up, sign on the dotted line in the spirit, so to speak. God, it's time for me to forget about myself, get my eyes on you,
find out what you want me to do and be doing it. And doing what God wants you to do doesn't mean that you have to be a preacher on a pulpit or that you have to have a reverend in front of your name or you have to be a worship leader. It means that you need to get out in the area of your society, wherever God has placed you, and you need to act like Jesus. Just that simple. Colossians 3.12. Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives, who are purified and holy and well-beloved by God himself by putting on behavior. <laughs> so behavior is not just something we wait to kind of see how we feel and then act that way. We put on behavior. We decide ahead of time, God, with your help, I want to stay calm no matter what I come up against today. How many of you lose your, your peace quite often? Come on, don't be giving me none of this stuff. You know. <laughs> okay, do you know that peace is part of your clothing? It's actually your spiritual shoes. So if you're walking without peace, you're in danger of getting your feet all cut up and bruised and messed up. It hurts your walk with God. Well, you don't stay in peace. There's certain behavior that just doesn't look good on a believer. <laughs> Do you know that? Just like there's certain colors that don't look good on every person. This green looks good on me. But if I would have put on tan, it wouldn't have looked good on me at all. Well, some of the rest of you look great in tan. You might not look good in this green. We're careful to put the right things on us, the right style, the right thing that looks good on us, but yet we put on behaviors that don't go with us at all. They're not behaviors that a believer should have. Unforgiveness doesn't look good on a believer. Bitterness, resentment, anger, a bad attitude, doesn't look good on a believer. Impatience doesn't look good on a believer. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me tonight? The next time you lose your temper, you might as well hear God say, you just lost a piece of your clothes. And now you're out in the spiritual realm with part of yourself naked, <laughs> and you're about to have a problem. How many, if you were walking down the street and lost your pants, you'd be quick to pick them up? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't take very long. You'd grab those things, put them back on, tighten that belt. Well, Ephesians 6 says, tighten the belt of truth. What happens if you lose your pants spiritually? Some people just walk off and don't even care. We need to realize that there's a spiritual realm that is actually honestly more real and more important than this realm it's just that we ignore it because we can't see it but it's there amen, amen. and that's the realm that we're going to live in for eternity so we need to get used to it a little bit lift up your hand if you understand a little bit even what I'm talking about all right put on behavior Ephesians 4, 22, 24, 22 through 24. Strip yourselves of your farmer nature, put off and discard your old unrenewed self. <laughs> you know, for example, after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he then said a second thing to him. He said, take off your grave clothes. <laughs> Can I tell you, some of you wearing grave clothes. You're wearing stuff that don't look right on you. You're still wearing stuff from that old life. Still wearing an attitude that's discouraged and downtrodden all the time. He told Lazarus, not only come out of there and be raised from the dead, but take off your grave clothes. It's time to let go of the past and all the clothes from the grave, all the depression, the despondency, the fear, the bad attitude, the victim mentality. We need to take off all those grave clothes and get on our resurrection clothes. 
Now, it's almost like I can just hear some of you. It's almost like I'm kind of aggravating some of you. <laughs> You're kind of like, well, you just don't know what I feel like. <laughs> I can hear you. You just don't know what I feel like, and you just don't know what I've gone through. Don't come in here and give me your happy, clappy message about how joyful I ought to be. <laughs> Look at me and let me tell you something. <laughs> you can smile whether you want to or not. Actually, let me tell you something else. You can be nice even if you don't feel like it. Yeah, you can. You can be sweet and kind and nice even if there's not one thing in you that feels like it. And let me tell you something else. When you choose to do the right thing when it feels wrong, that's when you're growing and making progress. We don't grow at all if we're just doing what, what's easy. You know, I know people that they were just born happy. Well, I, I, I'm not like that. I wasn't born happy. I had to work on it. I was one of those people that I could find something sour in anything. I'd had a rough life. and I mean, I know people, they're just like, they're just in a good mood all the time. They're just happy all the time. I know people that are just so sweet, they just drip with sugar. And, and I think sometimes when God passed out nice genes, I think you got mine. But you know what? Even though I didn't have any in the natural, I inherited some from Jesus Christ. When I was born again, I got the nature of God. Amen? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away and all things become new. You get the nature of God when you become a child of God. And you inherit the fruit of the Spirit. You inherit the ability to forgive. You say, well, then why am I having such a problem? <laughs> because we live out of our soul rather than out of our spirit. It's not your spirit that has a problem. It's the soul that has a problem. And the soul has to be renewed. It's a work that has to be done on purpose. It has to be done with intention. It has to be done by the Holy Spirit, but it will only be done as you cooperate with Him by studying the Word. Not just hearing somebody else preach a message to you once a week, but you have to study the Word. you got to dig and study and be hungry for the Word of God and love the Word of God and learn how to be a worshiper. Amen? Israel wanted to do a little interview with me tonight about worship for his program and he said why do you love worship I said if you've got a case of the yuckies worship will get rid of it quicker than anything yeah. amen please listen to me you can't just go by how you feel and what you think and what you want that's all in your soul well I don't want you to act like that anymore and I am not going to be happy until you change you know, I used to think I couldn't be happy until, and I can't be happy until, and I can't be happy until, and I can't be happy until. And I finally figured out it was time to get happy now. Is there anybody in this place that needs to get happy now? Okay, listen, I'm going to give you a good thing here. You cannot control what other people do, but you can control what you do. Yes, you can. You say, oh, no, I don't have any self-control. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's the very last fruit of the Spirit that's listed in Galatians 5 that you're given when you receive the Holy Ghost. Self-control. Self-control means you can control yourself. We're not given a spirit of others' control. <laughs> Nobody in here has been given by God a spirit of others' control. You've been given a spirit of self-control control. Hallelujah, I'm preaching better than you're acting. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. 
Let's go back to Ephesians 4, 24 through 26. Strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and discard your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lust and desires that spring from delusion. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude. And put on the new nature. So he says, put off the old nature, put on the new nature. And what's the bridge to get there? Change the way you think by letting your mind be renewed by the word of God. For example, if you get up every morning and do nothing but think about all your mistakes and all your problems and how you messed up yesterday and how bad you feel and, and, and about everything you don't have in life, I can almost promise you that you will not be able to go out and be nice to anybody. Come on now. You got to wake up in the morning and you got to think some things on purpose. Don't just think and meditate on everything that the devil tries to drop in your head. You begin to think like God wants you to think. And you can do your own thinking. You don't have to just think whatever the devil offers you. You can do your own thinking. And one of the things that will help you is to talk out loud. Get up every morning. If you can, it's something you would enjoy doing. Drop down on your knees by the side of your bed right away and just say, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me today behave the way you want me to behave. You know, you work for God. You're on His payroll. If you go out and do what you're supposed to every day, you'll get your paycheck. God will take care of you. Come on, I'm talking to you. God will take care of you. We all work for God. In Judges 6.34, it says, The Spirit of God clothed Gideon with himself. Woo! Hallelujah. Man, that's the best thing to be clothed with. Judges 6.34, The Spirit of God clothed Gideon with himself. God clothes us with his Spirit. And then he asks us to go out and represent him. In Job 29, 14 through 16, let's take a look at this. Job said, I put on righteousness. <laughs> How do you put on righteousness? We're going to see as we get further into the evening that righteousness is kind of a twofold thing. It's being made right with God through the grace and the mercy of God, through undeserved favor, through nothing that we do to earn it or deserve it. But then it is also the walking out of that righteousness in your everyday life. We all get excited when we hear that we've been made right with God through the blood of Christ. But we need to get just as excited about learning how to do the right thing in our everyday life. Are you focusing on going out every day clothed with the Spirit of God, having on the right spiritual clothing, representing God, and doing the right thing? Do not be weary in well-doing and doing what is right, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. The Bible even says that those who love righteousness will have a special anointing from God. Love righteousness. Want to do the right thing. It's wrong to hold unforgiveness. Study in that area until you get a breakthrough. I have never in all my years of ministry. Now this is kind of the condition we're in. I have never in all my years of ministry ever preached a message on strife or unforgiveness. No matter how many people are in the crowd. It could be thousands like tonight. And at the end, say, everybody stand up who needs to forgive somebody in your life. I've never had less than 70 to 80% of the entire congregation get on their feet. Never, not one time, not anywhere. Who are you mad at? See, when you clap those wimpy claps... I know it's because you're having a hard time clapping loud because you're kind of maybe in that category.
Well, I want you to remember that just like I have physical clothes on here, we all have spiritual clothing on, or we don't have it on. And if we don't have it on, we're open to attack from the enemy. The Bible teaches us about putting on things like shoes of peace and the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. And Ephesians 4 says that we are to put off the old and put on the new. So we need to take responsibility, receive the grace of God, and make sure that we are clothed with the Spirit of God. Spending a little time with God in the morning, spending some time in the Word, these things help to clothe you properly before you go out into the world. Today, we're having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayer Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they've been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. So I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.